Hey there, folks. So, just a quickie, uh, but nonetheless important. I just want to go over something that I've been seeing a, seeing a lot uh, from other content creators and such, and it kind of peeves me because it's it's such a little step and it's really important. But uh, long story short, before I ramble too long, uh, there's an important step that you should be taking whenever you get a new backlight kit for any console, not just Game Boy Colors in particular. Um, you should be testing it before installing, because sometimes stuff gets through QC, sometimes things get damaged in shipping, so on and so forth, and it's it's, it's really difficult to determine what's the um, result of improper handling or what got damaged in shipping. Uh, but even from the user perspective, you know, you don't want to sit there spend an hour doing an install of something that's not going to work anyway when you could just test it in the first few minutes. So let me just quickly walk through um, a, a nice easy way to test these things. So I've got here a perfectly stocked Game Boy Color that we're going to be reshelling and putting a new backlight kit in, at least in another video. For now, we're just going to use it to test a backlight kit. I'm going to go ahead and pull my game out of here and pull my batteries out. Now, note, normally Game Boy Colors do have screws in them, but I did already go ahead and remove them just for making this video a little bit quicker. I'll pull that power switch out, detach the screen here. There were just six screws along the periphery for the Game Boy Color in particular, and then three more screws in the motherboard down here. Pull out those two uh, latches for the bale. They slide up towards the top of the console, and then you can hinge the motherboard up around and then pull the ribbon out and we'll leave all that there we won't need it and I'll just go ahead and set this whole thing aside now if you're not reshelling your Game Boy Color you're gonna want to pop this out but in a moment we want to test the new screen first because there's no sense taking this apart any further if there's a problem so I'll go ahead and set that aside and let us take a look at the kit here so this one's not exactly packaged how they normally come, but in this particular case, this is a bit of a special kit, and you'll see in, in a moment here. Uh, this one is from Retro Game Repair Shop, and like just about all the other kits they sell, they usually pop one of these uh, cards in here saying, warning, test before installation, yada, 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 any damage caused by improper handling will not be warranted. Um, pretty standard stuff for any any retailer that you purchase these things from. Um, now, maybe they'll be nice, make a one-time exception for you, but don't count on it. It's just easier to test it before install, and uh, you won't have any problems. So anyway, here's the screen. Here is the ribbon cable that connects the screen adapter to the screen to the Game Boy Color. And then there's that. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in. I'm going to start on this end. It goes pins up. I'm fairly certain all Game Boys go pins up. Uh, and then on the screen side, we will go ahead and plug the screen in. Also pins up in this particular case. Note that not all backlight kits are the same, uh, but most of them are going to be pretty similar. Um, in this particular case, it goes pins up. And then this side goes pins down. Insert that, and then put the bail closed. On this backlight kit in particular, the game side goes to the Game Boy, and then the LCD side goes to the screen. And we can just fold that up. Or we can leave it unfolded. Doesn't matter too greatly. Uh, if there is any plastic film on the screen, you might as well leave it on because, you know, we're going to be handling this thing, getting fingerprints all over it. There's no purpose to removing it at this stage since we're not doing the install yet. Uh, but now comes time to actually testing this thing out. So we have three options, four options. Uh, first one, and it's what I usually go with. We could use a power supply to power the Game Boy. I like to use a power supply because A, I have a power supply, but two, uh, because I like to do power usage testing. Uh, so if I'm running the Game Boy through the power supply, I can see exactly how much, how many milliamps it's pulling, you know, how much wattage the Game Boy is using. Um, and that 
you know, I, I compile that information, I use it to see, okay, if your default batteries, you know, in an unmodded Game Boy will get you about 20 hours, and this thing is pulling twice as many amps, then you'll probably get about 10 hours or so. I think that's helpful data to have, so that's why I use this. But if you're not trying to pull that kind of data, there's no sense in buying a power supply just to test out Game Boys. So that leads us to option number second. Uh, you can use one of these little um, like dual battery holders and then just attach some alligator clips to it and then just clip these onto the battery terminals on the Game Boy here. Red to positive, black to negative, and then pop batteries in and Bob Jonte. Um, but you don't have to go this route either. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you don't necessarily have to buy one. They're pretty easy to make, but if you don't have the parts to make it, then here's option the third. We can use a DC jack adapter. Now, uh, formerly Jelly Belly Customs, now by the name Lab15, makes a uh, little USB adapter thing that you plug in one end to your computer or to a, like a cell phone charger and then the other end into your Game Boy and you can power it that way. That'll work a treat. Um, if you have a uh, wall wart adapter to plug into a Game Boy, double check that it has enough current. If it only supports up to 300 milliamps, that's going to be a little bit low. And if it's less than that, it's no good at all. Um, you got to make sure that you have one that can actually handle a Game Boy plus a backlight um, plus some extra overhead um, because these things pull a little bit more current on startup and you don't want to blow up your Game Boy or that power supply. I don't recommend that option. But if you have one and you know what you're doing, uh, feel free to use it. It will work um, as long as it puts out enough power. Fourth option, and by far the easiest and my favorite, take your rear shell here. We'll drop it on the Game Boy. We can slam a game in there to hold the shell on. And then you just drop batteries in and power it up. And once we've got that step... I'm going to drop my power switch in here, maybe, perhaps, perchance, there we go, and switch it on. Now you notice Game Boy came on, but my screen's not on. It's because I missed an important step, and I did that on purpose. Uh, we want to test this out beforehand. We want to do the absolute minimum necessary possible to install this. In this particular case, I didn't solder on this power wire. Now, I can cheat a little bit and just hold it onto the part it needs to get soldered to, and I can use that to determine, yes, indeed, my screen is exactly working as it should, and I can even toggle the brightness up and down. But realistically, you can and should solder this down. So let us get that soldered and make sure it's working when uh, connected properly. I'm going to pop my batteries out here, pop the game out, and pull this bad boy out. And my wire here, we just want to connect up to the common pin on the power switch. Is it the common pin or is it pin number three? Double check your uh, instructions. We'll get some solder on that pin, get it nice and tinned. There we go. Nice. Tin the wire, get some fresh solder on that. Then I'll take my tweezers and hold it down there while I attach that on. And there we go. There's nothing wrong with soldering the wire up to test out the backlight kit. You just want to make sure that we don't get too far in the install. We want to do the minimum amount possible so we can make sure it works and then we can continue the install. And uh, I forgot to switch it off, so it switched on as soon as I put that battery in. But you can see it's working fine now.
and I can still toggle through my brightness options with my touch sensor here. So that's it. That's all we wanted to do. Um, key points here. Um, well, I guess this one doesn't have adhesive for me to peel off, uh, and there's no uh, film on the screen for me to peel off either, but were that there, it would still be on there. Um, but now that we have it tested, I can go ahead and continue with the install, and uh, there we go. Every other Game Boy should be pretty much the same thing. You can slip the bottom case on and drop the batteries in, and you have access to everything you need to have access to, uh, and you don't have to get this thing installed. You don't have to waste your time carving out the shell, getting everything to fit out, which in this case, since this is a laminated screen, that would have been a pain in the butt. But that's not the case. It's working. It probably would have been fine. So there we go. I'll catch you all next time, and uh, we'll take a look at my video on this kit. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.